Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready to look at something a little bit more complicated, namely the Planck's black body radiation curve and the associated equation. So most of us are now familiar with the black body curve, and we know that depending upon the temperature, one, the intensity will go up at higher temperatures, and the peak of the curve will go to the left with higher temperatures as well. The equation that describes this curve, known as the Planck's black body radiation, radiation equation, is, is, uh, is shown right here. And notice, it calculates what we call the spectral emittance, the amount of energy radiated per unit angle, not per unit angle, but per unit wavelength. So you can see that we could coordinate this off in little snippets, little slices, and we can calculate the dq, d lambda within each of those slices. And we're going to do it for two different wavelengths. We're going to do it for 500 nanometers and for 1,000 nanometers. Now for a black body at a temperature of 3,000 Kelvin, the peak is at wavelength of 967 nanometers. To the right, the wavelength gets larger. To the left, the wavelength gets smaller. So to the right, let's say we'd have the wavelength of 1,000 nanometers, which is in the infrared. And to the left, we can pick the wavelength at 500 nanometers, which is invisible light. Then for our benefit, we've also written down a few constants, h, which is the Planck's constant, the speed of light, and the Boltzmann's constant, 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. So let's simply plug in the numbers. And the reason why we're doing that is to get familiarity with the equation. How do you calculate the spectral emittance? And let's say that we want the spectral emittance ratio, the q um, sub lambda, of let's say at a thousand nanometers so lambda equals a thousand nanometers and let's divide that by the q of lambda equals to 500 nanometers so let's get the ratio of what the spectral emittance is at a thousand nanometers versus the spectral emittance at 500 nanometers so you can see at 500 nanometers so we're going to take the ratio of the spectral emittance, emittance calculated for these two wavelengths. We'd expect it to be smaller for 500 nanometers because we're definitely far to the left of the peak of the curve and the 1000 nanometers is very close to the peak. So we expect a higher spectral emittance at the 1000 nanometers and a smaller spectral emittance at 500 nanometers. So let's find out if that's the case. So all it is is simply plugging into that equation and cranking the calculator, although it's not as simple as you might think because that's kind of a, a complicated equation. So let's start with the first one. So Q at the wavelength equal to 1,000 nanometers. That's equal to, that would be 2 pi times Planck's constant, which is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds times the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And we're going to square that. And then we're going to take the whole thing and divide it by the wavelength to the fifth power. So that's 1,000 nanometers. That's 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. And we have to raise that to the fifth power times E raised to the H, which is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds times the speed of light 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second and now we're going to divide the whole thing by this is all part of the exponent of e k which is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 and that would be joules per kelvin we multiply the times 3000 kelvin and then we multiply the times the wavelength of 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. And on this whole thing, e to the exponent, we subtract 1 from that. Now obviously, if this is a really big number, like it will be in these examples, minus 1 is going to make a very small difference. Now, if all of this is a very small number, then of course minus 1 is going to be significant. All right, so all we need to do now is grab a calculator and try to come up with the right value for that. So let's start with the exponent portion. So we have 6.626 e to the third four minus times 3 e to the eight 
divided by 1.38 e to the 23 minus, divided by 3,000, and divide by 1 e to the 6 minus equals. So that's the exponent. I get 4.8 and some more decimals there, so 4.8. That becomes e to the x. So I get 121.7 minus 1. So the minus 1 is a very small number. Minus 1, that gives us 120. So this whole thing is equal to about 120. So let's, let's write that down. So this is equal to... So here we get 1 times 10 to the minus 6 raised to the 5th power times 121.6866666 minus 1. So this whole exponent here is equal to this, minus 1, and then multiply times that, and then we multiply times the numerator. So whatever that numerator is. All right. 120.6866 times 1 e to the 6 minus raised to the 5th power. Okay. Bring that to the numerator. Now, we're going to multiply that times 2 and times pi, multiply times 6.626 e to the 34 minus, and multiply times 3 e to the 8 squared equals, ah, I think I got it. There we go. So this is equal to 3.105 times 10 to the 12th power. So that's what we call the spectral emittance. So unit-wise, the units for this will be in terms of watts, which is joules per second per square meter. So that is the spectral emittance Q, but then we do it in respect to lambda. So we have to multiply this times 1 over meter. So it's watts per square meter times 1 over meter because it's per change in the wavelength. Now let's calculate what's in the numerator here for your benefit. So when you do this yourself, you can check to see if you get the same answer. So 2 times pi times 6.626 e to the 34 minus times 3 e to the 8 squared equals in the numerator, we end up with uh, 3.747 times 10 to the minus 16. And so when you calculate all this out, end up with those units. Also notice that when you work out these units right here, all these units drop out because this portion of the equation is unitless. All right. Now, we're going to do this again for Q at, for lambda equal 500 nanometers. So Q when lambda equals 500 nanometers. So this would be equal to 2 pi times... 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds times 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second quantity squared. And the whole thing divided by, now in the denominator, this is going to change. I'm going to change color here. So you can see that the changes are here. So this will be 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 6 to the fifth power. So that would be, of course, in meters. That would be meters. There we go. And then what else we got? So here we have the quantity E. The numerator will be the same. 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. Speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8. All divided by, this will be the same. That's another constant. 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23. The temperature is still 3,000 Kelvin, but now the wavelength is again going to change to 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. There we go. And the whole thing, of course, minus 1. All right. So let's see how things now change. So first of all, let's recalculate this. So we had 121.6866 minus 1 in the previous one when we had those calculations. So let's see what we get over here. So we end up with 6.626 e to the 34 minus times 3 e to the 8 divided by 1.38 e to the 23 minus divided by 3,000 and divided by 0.5 e to the 6 minus equals. Now we get... 
the exponent 9.6 to the exponent is twice as much. So now we're going to get e to the x. So now we get, wow, a much greater exponent. So let's see here. Let's plug it in here. So this is equal to, the numerator is going to be exactly the same. So it's going to be 3.747 times 10 to the minus 16 in the numerator divided by in the denominator, we have a much smaller number here because we have 0 0.5 to the fifth power instead of 1 times 10 to the minus 6 to the fifth power. So here we have this quantity right here, which is 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 6 to the fifth power. And over here we get 14,807, 14,807.6 14 minus 1. So now what happens when we calculate all this out? So we go minus 1 equals times 0.5 e to the 6 minus raised to the 5th power. And notice now in the denominator we end up with a, with a much, let's see, different number. Then we multiply that times, bring that to the numerator, and multiply times 3.747 e to the 16 minus equals, and so now we get this to be equal to 8.098, 8.098 times 10 to the 11th, that will be watts per square meter times 1 over meters. So there we have the spectral emittance with respect to the wavelength for a wavelength of 500 nanometers M for a thousand nanometers. So let's go ahead and box those two answers. So we have this answer right here, and we have our second answer here. So that's our first answer at a thousand nanometers, and the second answer at 500 nanometers. And notice it is a smaller number compared to what we had before because we're now on the left side of the curve. We're probably a little bit further to the left than what I indicated here. So I probably want to just kind of move it over here. And so I'll just say this is the nine the 500 nanometer spot right there. So ratio wise, let's the, ra the ratio would be this number divided by this number. Let's go ahead and do that. So we have 3.105 e to the 12 divided by 8.098 e to the 11 equals, and the ratio is 3.83, which means that at a thousand nanometers, it radiates out almost four times as much than at a wavelength of 500 nanometers. So again, the only difficulty here was really trying to plug in all the numbers and punching the right numbers on your calculator to calculate the spectral emittance at 1,000 nanometers, the spectral emittance of 500 nanometers. When we take the ratio between the two, it's almost a four to one. With other words, the spectral emittance is almost four times as great at 1,000 nanometers compared to 500 nanometers. Obviously, I didn't quite get curved right. It's probably f much further to the left relative to here. So you can see that it's a much smaller radial emittance over here, spectral emittance, compared to the spectral emittance over there. But at least it gives us a feel for the equation and how the equation represents the curve and how we can find the emittance, the spectral emittance, anywhere along the curve by simply plugging in some values into that equation. So later on, we're going to show you some, uh, some videos where we see how that equation was derived and how that equation uh, is similar to the Stefan Boltzmann equation, where the relationship is between the two, because after all, they both should be satisfying the same equation under all circumstances. So we'll show you how to do that in some later videos.